Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my complete and detailed Emily guide. Emily, or Emily, if you're French, is the newest five-star Dendro support in Genshin Impact who specializes on the burning reaction, which is one that has been long neglected since Dendro came out in 3.0. Emily is a unique sub-DPS that I've been enjoying, and so I'm going to show you guys the best ways to build and play her in this video. We're going to be covering her best builds, artifacts, weapons, teams, constellations, playstyle, and also include a C0 showcase to help you guys get the most value out of your Emily. Before we begin, I want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested and with all that being said let's talk about emily all right so starting things off what does emily actually do and how do you play her well first of all her elemental skill fragrance extraction is a core part of her kit this ability will place down a luminous case effectively a dendro lantern that will start by dealing aoe dendro damage and then it will continuously fire off a hit of dendro damage at nearby opponents additionally when nearby opponents are affected by burning so as enemies nearby are burning they will give off sense and these scents will be gathered by the luminous case in order to level it up. In fact, you need two cents to level up your Luminous case from level one to level two, and you can generate up to one cent every two seconds. What this does in practice, though, is just make your Luminous case significantly stronger. It will start firing two shots instead of one, have a bit of a bigger AoE, and will actually start dealing a good amount of damage, much better than its level one counterpart. Additional properties you should know are that if it doesn't collect any other scent for eight seconds while it's on field, it will go back to level one, and her skill will also have a Numa aligned hit attached to it, which can help against certain enemies. Now, more importantly, the skill is an ability with a 22 second duration and a 14 second cooldown. This means that it has a very long duration, much longer than its cooldown, meaning that you should have 100% uptime with ease and you shouldn't have to worry too much about it. Additionally, your skill's duration can also be reset through your elemental burst, which is the next ability we're going to talk about. Emily's elemental burst, Aromatic Explication, will immediately create a level 3 Lumaduce case and also store away an existing case if you already have one active. Now, with the level 3 lantern, will do is effectively just be a stronger version of your skill, lasting for 2.8 seconds and dealing a higher amount of dendro damage with also a much bigger AoE. Now, at the end of your burst duration, it will either create a new level 1 version of your skill, or if you already had used your skill and it stored it away as mentioned earlier, it will just redeploy it and reset its duration completely. What this means is that if you use your skill and have a level 2 one out, and then you use your burst, you'll have 2.8 seconds of a level 3 Luminous case, and afterwards it will bring back out your level 2 one that you already had and also fully reset its duration giving you another 22 seconds of uptime and honestly since your burst also only has a 13.5 second cooldown this can make it to where you may never need to actually press your skill again since your burst is not only efficient to use but also resummons your skill and resets its duration you can kind of have a never-ending cycle here with a hundred percent uptime on your luminous case without even having to repress your skill as mentioned though if you didn't already press your skill before using your burst it will then just summon a new level one case which is very very convenient. Also, if you press your skill inside of your burst, it won't create a new case, which is whatever. And also worth noting that your skill does have a very large radius, meaning that it should be able to reach the enemies you're fighting unless you run really far away, in which case you may want to redeploy it. To clarify a bit more, her burst will rain down a drop of scent to do every 0.3 seconds, and one opponent can become the target every 0.7 seconds. What this means is that in AoE, it will cycle between enemies, with each enemy being able to become the target every 0.7 seconds, and in single target, you will sort of hit the enemy but also sometimes rain down these dendro semi randomly but it is important to understand that her burst does have a solid aoe meaning that it can hit enemies around the main target which is good to know oh and i also wanted to add that neither emily's skill or burst snapshot meaning that any buffs given to emily will not be extended for the case's entire duration and will unfortunately expire normally moving on for your passives here are other reasons why emily synergizes particularly well with burning outside of just her elemental skill doing much more damage first of all every time emily collects two cents, which again, you get through burning opponents, her level two Luminous case will consume sense and deal AoE dendro damage equal to 600% of Emily's attack. And this is a very big scaling. This damage is not considered skill damage. So any skill damage buffs you're getting won't affect it, but basically everything else will. And it's definitely a big bonus that you will be getting periodically as you trigger burning. Additionally, her second passive will increase her damage to burning opponents based on her attack with every thousand attack, increasing damage dealt by 15% up to a maximum of 30 36%. This means that on average, you'll get a solid amount of damage bonus here, like at least 25 to 36%. Lastly, your third passive, which is an exploration passive, actually does help out in combat as it makes your party members take way less damage from burning. In fact, they'll have 85% power res against burning damage, which in my experience actually can matter. This is especially true against a lot of enemies that are next to you that could be dealing burning to you. Having power res here can actually help increase your survivability and be nice for quality of life. Overall, however, her other 
two passive talents and also her skill scaling being significantly higher against enemies if you do manage to level it up from one to two. And all of this being dependent on the fact that there's at least a burning enemy nearby makes it to where Emily's kit is very clearly designed around the burning reaction. While she can have some other uses, you typically will at least want to play her with burning in order to get the most value out of her kit and make her feel like a complete character who will get much stronger provided you can trigger this reaction. Before moving on to some more detailed information about her playstyle, however, I would like to say that for Emily's talent priority, I would level both your skill and burst, with your skill being your number one priority, and then your burst is also important depending on how often you use it, but just in general, level both of these talents, and you can neglect your normal attacks unless you plan on on-fielding her and using her as a main DPS. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed, Emily's kit is fairly straightforward. You place out a lantern, it will constantly deal some dentro damage, and basically all of her kit will just do way more damage with the burning reaction, making her pretty straightforward in that regard. Emily will be support or sub DPS will provide you with a decent amount of dendro application. Honestly, not a fast amount. Her dendro application isn't super fast. I wouldn't use her just for that, but it's enough to trigger burning or even quicken, but more on that later, while also primarily having a solid amount of dendro damage with a pretty small AoE on her skill, but a big one on her burst, making it to where I personally like using her burst as often as possible, even if it's not the main part of her kit. It's a solid amount of damage. I recommend building for it as well, with her skill having a 100% uptime, dealing dendro damage, and helping you trigger dendro reactions. Because of this, Emily's team building can be pretty straightforward. You want burning, but she can also synergize with other reactions or other characters that you may not think of, like being able to run both quicken and burning in the same team, or burning and melt, burning and vaporize, maybe with Nevelette, things like that, which we'll cover in the team section, on top of just her straightforward burning teams or pyro-focused team comps, where you can just kind of throw Emily in there, get the occasional burning, and make her a solid damage-dealing support. As long as you have another pyro character in the team and you are triggering burning, there are a lot of other reactions you can also trigger, a lot of different teams where Emily can actually be a good fit, on top of also just like mono pyro and burning focused teams as well, making Emily a bit more versatile than you might think, while obviously still revolving around the burning reaction, being a reaction that is otherwise neglected. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, Emily's skill is not something that you're gonna have to redeploy, because every time you use her burst, it will reset the duration of your skill, making her very easy and simple to use, having over 100% uptime on her Dendro Lantern, making it something that you don't really have to worry about. Overall though, Emily's a character who does a ton of damage provided you're building her and her teams properly. If you're triggering burning and know what you're doing, you can genuinely make her a solid sub DPS who has a lot of damage coming from her skill, her burst, and especially her passive that gives you a nice bonus chunk of damage as you're collecting sense. Her whole kit is very unique and kind of unlike anything we've seen in the sense that it synergizes really well with burning, a forgotten reaction, and she's not as niche as you may think. I briefly touched on this and we'll cover it in the team section, but there are many more teams where you can actually fit in burning, which is really cool for Emily. For my thoughts on her, I think that her damage, pretty objectively speaking, is solid. She's a strong sub DPS if you are triggering burning, and I think she synergizes pretty well with current units that are quite strong, current team archetypes, and also will probably synergize well with future characters coming in that land. Obviously, burning is dendro and pyro, and not only have we seen previews of characters that are going to be both dendro and pyro coming out, but also obviously it's a pyro region, so you can only expect more synergy on that front, but obviously it's only speculation. With that in mind, I think Emily is a solid support, solid sub DPS. If you like her, definitely good enough to get, but don't feel forced to get her because a new region's coming out. And also, while I think she's strong and will probably get stronger, most of her teams can use another character instead of Emily, even when she's very good in a team, making her not someone you absolutely need, but a solid character who has a strong role and does good damage, in my opinion. I like Emily. I don't want to overhype her, but I don't want to undersell her either. I think she's solid and can be a good addition to your account depending on what teams you're playing, especially if you like her, but obviously not a needed one, so don't feel forced to get her. Personally though, I've had a lot of fun with Emily and I was pleasantly surprised with the damage I could dish out, even though she's obviously not the main source of my team's damage, it's just a nice little bonus constantly happening in the background on top of enabling certain burning teams. Her dendro application is not the highest, but it is enough to trigger burning with her burst giving you even more dendro app, being a character who is primarily used for her personal off-field damage as a sub DPS. All right, now with all that out of the way, let's talk about how to actually build your Emily. First of all, for your artifact sets, it's relatively straightforward. There are two main sets that you can use and that are, for the most part, pretty interchangeable. The first one is the Unfinished Reverie set, which is typically your best in slot as far as Emily's damage is concerned. This set will give you 18% attack on the two-piece and then a 50% damage bonus on the four-piece, effectively for free, provided you are triggering the burning reaction and there are burning opponents nearby. As long as you fulfill that criteria, which you almost always will with Emily, you can get a free 50% damage bonus with a solid uptime to all of 
your kit on top of also getting attack percent as an additional bonus. Because of this, it's a solid set to increase your damage and typically will be your best in slot. Now, with that in mind, the four piece Deepwood Memories is a great supportive set that will perform similarly and is a very viable option as well. This set will give you 15% Dendro damage bonus on the two piece and will reduce the Dendro res of opponents by 30% on the four piece, which is a vital set that most people have farmed by now as it's useful in so many Dendro teams. Now, with Emily in particular, if she's your only source of Dendro damage, having Deepwood Memories on her is definitely still a good option and will perform similarly, usually only slightly worse than the unfinished Reverie set, meaning that you can choose whichever one you have that has better substats or that you've already farmed. However, I think it's also worth mentioning that you can run the Deepwood Memory set on another support in your team, either another Dendro character or even a non-Dendro support who can hit enemies consistently with their skill or burst from off field, like maybe a Zhongli if his pillar is hitting enemies consistently, to where you can run Deepwood on another character and then run Unfinished Reverie on your MLE. With that in mind though, both sets are great for her, so as I said, while Reverie is typically your best in slot, Deepwood Memories is very close and a solid option that you can use as well, once again, choosing based on your substats. Now, outside of these two most recommended sets though, there are quite a few other options that you can use. First of all, you can run the Golden Troop set for a solid amount of skill damage from off field, making it a very viable option, or you can even mix and match two piece sets. Of any useful substats, notably two piece dendro damage with two piece attack, with both of these options being very viable, but a bit worse, like around 10% or so, than her best in slot options. Outside of this, if you're running maybe like a Burgeon team or a team where EM is more relevant, then Gilded Dreams becomes viable, but for the most part, it isn't as recommended because Emily scales much better with attack than with EM, as we'll cover in the next section. Because of this, I highly recommend running any of the other sets that I mentioned, namely Unfinished Reverie or Deepwood Memories as your two best options. All right, now moving on, let's talk about what stats you want on Emily. Firstly, let me clear up any misconceptions you may have about Emily and Burning in particular. While Emily is a character who will be oftentimes triggering Burning, or at least be played in teams where Burning is triggered nonstop, even if you are triggering said reaction, building Elemental Mastery is not recommended for Emily. While the substat is still useful, it's not a wasted stat, you will not gain as much damage from building Elemental Mastery as you would if you build Attack, or notably Crit, and so even going for something like an Elemental Mastery Sands is not as recommended as Attack Percent because of the way Burning works. The reaction doesn't do that much damage, also you might not have full ownership of the Burning reaction on your Emily herself, and again, while Burning is a nice source of damage and definitely adds to your Emily's kit, it'll enhance her skill and will be a nice extra source of damage for your team. Building for your burning damage, building EM will not be as good, not as strong. You won't get as much damage as if you were to build attack for your Emily. So I wanted to clear that up right away and settle the sort of attack versus EM question that I'm sure I'll be getting asked. Now, outside of just that though, the stats you're going to be looking for on Emily are as follows. Crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent to maximize your damage, with elemental mastery being okay too, but not as needed. Now, as far as energy recharge is concerned, I recommend building as much as you need to either use your burst every rotation or use your burst every other rotation. Now, personally, I think there are some great advantages to using her burst, namely the fact that it's much better in AoE. It will rain down a pretty high amount of damage on enemies with a much bigger AoE than her skill, aiding you in dealing more AoE damage and giving you more AoE dendro application. In single target, it's good too, but not as impressive, on top of also allowing you to reset your skill's duration, keeping it at level 2 without having to reuse your skill and restart from level 1. Keeping your skill level 2 not just will give you a bit more damage from your skill itself, but also allows you to trigger your passive, getting an extra passive proc, as this passive does add up to a lot of damage. Overall, I think her burst is solid and a good part of her kit, but it's not absolutely needed, and because Emily's energy recharge requirements in different teams honestly vary heavily, if you start needing way too much energy recharge, it can be a viable strategy to focus on building damage stats like crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, and not worry much about your energy recharge, and just use your burst every other rotation. With that in mind, in a lot of her teams, her ER requirements are more manageable, and personally, especially for AoE, I value using her burst, but again, this can depend on many factors, like how much energy your team's generating, whether or not you're running a Dendro battery, and even your weapon choice, as her signature, for example, will greatly decrease her energy recharge needs, making them almost non-existent. With that in mind, if you're wondering how much ER to look for Emily, I'll put some rough numbers on screen now, keeping in mind that you basically need none if you're bursting every other rotation, and if you choose to burst every rotation, which will usually perform similarly and have a particular advantage in AoE, on top of being comfy. Personally, I'd say around 150 to as high as 180, depending on your team. Keep in mind that most of Emily's teams won't necessarily feature another Dendro character. Some of them do, but not all of them. So a lot of the times, if you do want to burst as often as possible, you will need quite a bit of ER. Now, outside of just ER, try to maximize your Emily's damage. Once you have enough to use your burst as often as you would like, be it either every rotation or every
every other rotation. I recommend going for stats such as crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, looking for crit rate or crit damage on your circlet, dendro damage bonus on your goblet, and attack percent on your sands. Keep in mind that energy recharge can be a viable sands as well if you need more, and elemental mastery just isn't as good as attack. The only real exception to this would be if you're playing Emily as a burgeon unit with a C6 Bennett, but that's not quite as common. All right, now next up, let's talk about Emily's best weapons, covering all of her options for every type of player. First of all, Emily's signature weapon is a very strong stat stick. This is a weapon that gives you 33% crit rate and 608 base attack, on top of giving you 15% attack for free through its effect. This already makes it, as I said, a solid stat stick for characters in general, but it gets better on Emily due to the second part of its effect, which will give you additional buffs when you trigger burning, or if you just deal dendro damage to a burning enemy. Once that happens, you will gain 18% damage stacking up to two times for up to 36% damage bonus. And then when you hit two stacks or refresh the duration, you can restore 12 energy up to once every 12 seconds, which is a big deal. This will greatly reduce how much energy recharge your Emily will need to burst every rotation, making it to where you basically don't even need to build much ER at all anymore, which makes it overall a super solid stat stick for Emily, especially if you need some energy. Not only are the stats you're gaining, the crit rate, the base attack, the attack percent, and the damage bonus huge, but the energy on top of that is the cherry on top, making it overall a very strong option for Emily. Now, a big disclaimer here, please don't feel forced to get this weapon. While yes, it is a solid stat stick, and it's definitely a big DPS increase to your Emily, as we'll see in the weapon ranking coming up shortly, keep in mind that Emily, since she's mostly played as a support or sub DPS, won't be the only source of your team's damage. So while it may be a big damage increase for your Emily, it might not be the biggest damage increase for your overall team, but it's still a solid signature weapon and her best option by a solid margin. Now, outside of just her signature though, here's what you can use. First of all, a ton of five-star stat sticks are viable with the Calamity Queller, firstly, being surprisingly strong. This weapon has an insanely high base attack and then will just give you a ton of stats on its effect, some elemental damage bonus and a large amount of attack that's even higher when you're off field, which Emily typically will be. Calamity Queller is great and so are other five-star stat sticks like Staff of Homa, Staff of Scarlet Sands, especially if you're triggering Virgin, Crimson Moon Semblance, or even Vortex Vanquisher, even more so if you're shielded. And Jade Spear is also, as always, a solid stat stick. Additionally, if you need energy recharge desperately, a weapon such as Engulfing Lightning can also provide you with a lot of attack, making it viable as well, with the sort of standard crit or attack stat sticks being the most recommended five stars. Outside of that, regarding four star options, again, there are a few. Deathmatch is a solid stat stick for most polearm characters, and Emily is no exception, giving you a ton of crit rate and some attack as well. Ballad of the Fjords can be okay too, but not as recommended of a battle pass option as Deathmatch. Other powerful four stars include free to play options like the Missive Windspear, an event weapon that gives you a lot of attack and EM. And while yes, the attack percent is more valuable for Emily, EM is still a bonus, not a useless stat, and definitely makes Missive Windspear a solid free to play stat stick. Outside of that, another free to play option you can go if you miss the event is the Catch, which will give you a lot of energy recharge, burst damage, and crit rate, which is not like the perfect thing for Emily, but still useful stats nonetheless. Additionally, I want to mention that Favonius Lance is a solid stat stick as well, having a high base attack and giving you and your team a lot of energy, which is why it's pretty much always a go-to option for support characters. And while Emily does a lot of damage, so Favonius isn't my favorite option on her, as far as four stars go, it's definitely a solid choice if you need a lot of energy on your Emily and for your team. Other options like Prospector's Drill, if you're being healed consistently from off-field, Blackcliff Pole, or just other attack or crit stat sticks are all viable as well. Overall though, there are quite a few different options you can go. To recap my thoughts, firstly, here's a weapon ranking on screen now, giving you a rough idea of how good each weapon performs under specific assumptions. Keep in mind also that the ranking of the exact weapons here will vary heavily, especially if you factor in AoE situations and also if you get extra bursts with extra energy. Your signature weapon, for example, if it allows you to burst every rotation instead of every other rotation, which it oftentimes will, can be up to a 30% increase compared to other weapons. So keep in mind that it can actually be better than you're seeing here if the energy makes a big difference to you, which I do believe that it oftentimes will. And the same can be said with other ER weapons. Just keep in mind that a lot can vary based on the situation, rotation, and team. Moving on for Emily's constellations, here's what you need to know. Emily's first constellation will increase the damage of her skill and passive by 20%, which is nice on top of also generating an additional scent when a party member triggers a burning reaction or does dendro damage to burning opponents up to once every 2.9 seconds. What this means is not only will your C1 come with the damage bonus, it will also allow your passive to be triggered more often, and your passive is a good source of damage too, by getting more sense, triggering it more often, and translating to even more damage and also a bit more dendro application. For those reasons, I think her C1 is a solid one, a pretty sizable DPS increase to your Emily on top of a bit more dendro, and 
and making it a pretty solid C1 overall, although not a needed one. Now, for Emily's second constellation, this is another pretty good one that will give her a 30% dendro res shred for 10 seconds when any of her main abilities, being her skill, burst, or passive hit, hits an opponent, making it really nice for your overall dendro damage. This will primarily benefit your Emily, as obviously decreasing dendro res will increase her damage, but can also synergize well with another dendro support or carry you may be running in your team. Now, while most of Emily's teams, as we'll see, tend to run her as the only dendro option, so again, it's mostly benefiting her, there are some teams where you can pair her with another dendro unit, where this constellation will be even better, but as it stands, even just for her, it's pretty nice, especially if you're not running the Deepwood set, increasing your Emily's damage pretty significantly when paired with her C1 as well, making her first two constellations pretty solid early stopping points if you want to get them. Keep in mind though that Emily is a pretty good unit even at C0, and her gameplay doesn't change much with these constellations, they just make her stronger, so you can get them if you want, but don't feel forced to, although they are, in my opinion, pretty good for increasing her personal damage as a sub DPS. Moving on, her C3 and 5 will increase her talent levels. For Emily C4, this will increase the duration of her burst by 2 seconds, and also decrease the interval between opponents being selected as the target from 0.7 seconds to 0.4 seconds, which is nice, especially for bursting down a specific enemy, and making it a decent C4, especially for the burst duration increase. Lastly, for Emily C6, here Emily will gain a Dendro Infusion for 5 seconds after using her skill or burst, generating a scent and also giving her damage an additional 300% scaling that is obviously also Dendro damage, and this will be removed after 4 cents are created, with this effect being triggered up to once every 12 seconds. This will therefore give you a nice chunk of front-loaded damage, allowing your Emily to do normal or charge attacks that are Dendro, and giving her a bit more of a bursty DPS role. The scaling here is pretty high, 4 hits of Dendro damage, and 4 cents which will help trigger her passive, definitely adds a nice front-loaded burst of damage, which makes it a solid C6 if you want to go all the way for a character. Overall though, as I said, you don't need any of these constellations, and Emily is a solid character even at C0. With that said, she does have good constellations, with her C1 and C2 being strong early stopping points if you want to get them. Alright, now with all that out of the way, let's talk about one of the most important sections regarding Emily's best teams and synergies. Now, I want to start this section off by saying that Emily has more teams than you might think, as I briefly touched on earlier in the video. While Emily, as a character, is heavily reliant on at least triggering the burning reaction sometimes to significantly increase her damage, outside of just wanting at least one pyro character in the team, the rest is pretty flexible and there are many team comps that work well with Emily because she just has good off-field damage. First of all, a standard team for Emily is obviously going to be straight up burning or mono pyro. Teams that revolve around a high amount of pyro damage can obviously fit in a dendro support like Emily, who will apply a bit of dendro, constantly proc burning, which keeps the burning aura on enemies, they're constantly pyro. This can be with premier pyro carries like Arlecchino, Shangling, Linny, or pretty much anyone. You could use Yenfei, Klee, again, literally almost any pyro character can work here as your DPS, and then running a standard formula. Typically, you'll run a pyro carry with a support like Bennett, Emily, and then a flexible last slot, oftentimes being a, an Evo support like Kazua, who will greatly amplify your damage, or even someone like Zhongli, who can reduce the resistance of enemies and also provide you with a tanky shield, or even running another Dendro character, acting as a battery, a potential on-fielder, a deep wood holder, and just another option of many. And so running basically any variation of a mono pyro or mono burning team can work very well with Emily, as she can just be slotted in here without really any risk. As mentioned, you will typically have two pyro characters, Emily, and then a flexible last slot of either another pyro, a Nemo, Dendro, or a generic support like Zhongli. Personally, I've had the most success with this team right here, given how strong it is at a baseline, with Emily having good personal damage here as well, and the burning reaction is just a small bonus that adds up and that helps Emily do more damage. Additionally, you could also slot in Farina in this team, running something like Farina, Shangling, Bennett, and Emily, or a similar variation, and in this team, your Farina will be able to forward vape, amplifying her damage on top of just being solid units overall here, Farina will provide you with a large damage bonus to your whole team, have solid personal damage, and then also be able to run other strong characters, again, like Shangling, Bennett, and Emily, who will all deal good damage here, you'll get burning, vaporize on Farina, and you'll get a lot of damage buffs. Additionally, worth noting that if your Bennett is C6, your Emily can actually do some pyro-infused normal attacks on field if that's something you want to do, but for the most part, you can kind of just quick swap around, and it is a team that will work. Outside of just these pyro teams, though, you can also run Emily in a burn melt team with a cryo carry, with Rizli being a notable one, where you could pair him with Bennett and then a flexible pyro character who will apply pyro like Shangling, Toma, or even Dea, and then running Emily as the last slot here, keeping the burning and pyro aura on enemies as your Rizli will get some melts. This can also be ran with other cryo characters like Ganyu, for example. Although Rizli has been my favorite, and this team in particular once again has performed quite well for me as far as Rizli teams go, and has been surprisingly fun to play. Now, outside of burning 
Sword Melt. You could also run Emily with a Hydro Carry, notably Nevelette, enabling a lot of different reactions happening at once. You can not only trigger burning with a fast power applier like Shangling, but you'll also be able to get some vaporizes on your Nevelette and act as another element for Nevelette's passive to make his charge attacks much stronger. What ends up happening in this team is that if you trigger the burning at the start of your rotation and then swap to Nevelette, you will be able to get not only a lot more damage on your Emily because you're proccing burning, making her a solid sub DPS, but also acting as another element, allowing you to trigger the occasional bloom, a hydro related reaction, the occasional vaporize, and once again, synergize very well with Nevelette's kit that scales based on having other elements outside of just hydro in your team and making him deal much more damage. Something I want to mention though is that Nevelette does apply a lot of hydro, particularly against a lot of enemies if your beam is hitting everything. You can end up applying too much hydro, but for the most part, if you're doing a proper rotation, you should have good enough burning uptime to make Emily a solid character in this team and have synergy with Nevelette. The rest of this team is very flexible, however, provided you have a solid pyro player like Shang Ling, and then use a last slot that doesn't mess up your reactions with so many different characters being viable. Personally, I've been enjoying running a shielder like Zhang Li to make sure my C0 Nevelette doesn't get interrupted, but even an amplifying support like Kazua can work. Also, I wanted to mention that Zhang Li has the added benefit in an Emily team of being able to run the Deepwood Memory set, provided his pillar is on field and hitting the enemies you're fighting, so be mindful of that, and it will honestly greatly increase your damage and make Zhang Li even more relevant in almost any team that has a flexible slot available. Moving on, you could also run Emily in a Burgeon team, but keep in mind that because Emily's Dendro application is not the fastest, for a Burgeon team in particular, you will need to run another Dendro character with her to make sure you're triggering a consistent amount of Burgeons, and so running her with someone like Nahida in this team would be recommended. Outside of that, you'll run a Hydro character and a Pyro Burgeon trigger, typically being an EM Toma, or even someone like Shang Ling, and then your Hydro character can be super flexible. It can be an off-field sub DPS like Sing Cho or Yulan, or it could even be a Hydro on fielder like Kokomi or Ayato if you want to auto attack on them. Moving on, burning is also a reaction you can sort of sneak into some quicken teams, particularly with an electro carry. In fact, if your electro application is fast enough, you can maintain the quicken aura on enemies and actually get a good amount of aggravates for your electro carries on top of triggering burning and getting some free overloads as well. Because of this, running Emily, Toma, a fast electro applying support like Fischl, and an electro carry like Sino or Clorind can work and can make for a sort of quick burn team where a lot of different reactions are triggered and you should still get, if played properly, a good amount of aggravates for your electro carry. Also, regarding a Dendro main DPS in this team, while it is technically viable, I want to mention that not only would you need a very fast electro off-field support, like a C6 Fischl almost exclusively, but also because of the way the reactions interact with each other, if you're applying a lot of electro, you can typically be triggering both quicken and burning sort of at the same time. The auras can coexist and you can typically get a lot of aggravates on top of having overload and burning, whereas if you apply too much dendro and don't have enough electro, then you can end up overtaking the quicken aura and end up triggering burning a lot more and not get as many spreads on your dendro character. This can still be viable though if played correctly and if you have enough electro, but this may need a strict rotation and more testing, so be wary of this, but it's still something that I wanted to mention. Although, as I said, a quick burn team with an electro carry will be more consistent and easier. Lastly, for those wondering, you could technically use her as a second dendro slot in a Nilu team, but keep in mind that she won't have good synergy here. It's mostly just because she applies some dendro, particularly a decent amount with her ult that you can kind of spam, but she won't really do much special compared to just another generic dendro slot here. It's just a viable choice in case you really want to play these characters together. Outside of that though, all the other teams I mentioned I have been enjoying, with my personal favorites being Burn Melt, Nevelette, and especially Mono Pyro or Mono Burning teams, paired with a solid Pyro Carry and a flexible last slot, with Kazuo being my favorite for grouping and buffs. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's get into a showcase of Emily in a few different teams. Now keep in mind that as a sub DPS or a support, while her personal damage is quite good, obviously the team will be carried by the main DPS, so it won't just be Emily doing damage, obviously, but I will show her in her teams where it performed really well for me. I'm going to be using her with my Arlecchino and also my Linny, whom are both built very well. I also have a clip with Rizli, although this was recorded on the Asia test account I was using, which has a C1 Rizli, but everything else is basically the same. In fact, the builds were a bit worse than mine. Regarding my Emily build, however, she is currently on Deathmatch, R5, a battle pass weapon, and I was using Jade Spear with Rizli, and I'm on the four-piece unfinished reverie set, C0, of course, and level 9, 8 talents. Regarding her stats, she has a solid crit ratio of 95, 195, with 150 energy recharge, just because I like using my burst. Also, my Arlecchino and Linny are both obviously C0, and with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed the guide, and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go.
Please no, please no. Boom! Boom! That was good! That was good! And so yeah, overall, Emily is a character that I personally really have been enjoying. Like, I don't want to oversell her or anything because she is replaceable. Like, you can use so many options in so many of the teams where she fits. But as a burning support, someone that can actually make use of the burning reaction, who will probably synergize with the future region as well, is a character that I've had a lot of fun using and personally do like. If there's anything I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment, so be sure to check that. And I hope you enjoyed the showcase. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. One more, one more, one more! Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. Sorry.